Well, tonight, each side claiming victory for their candidate, but both sides did agree this debate went far better than the first. For one final time, candidates Joe Biden and President Trump took the debate stage. As the former VP and current president duked it out, Nevadans watched. And the president has been on point the entire time. We want to hear uh, our, our future president, you know, continue to lay out his plan on how we're going to build back better. Both the Nevada Democratic and Republican parties hosted debate watch parties. And from both sides of the aisle, one consensus. It was a lot more uh, cool, calm and collected, good conversation and uh, uh, debate between both candidates. As Americans, we want to hear the answers. We don't want to hear it being dominated. So we're actually hearing the answers. Biden supporters say it was his strongest performance, hitting on issues like health care and the COVID-19 crisis. Joe's done a very good job. I think he's done better than his first time. Because he's learning how to, I think he's learning how to be more aggressive without appearing more aggressive. I'm uh, impressed by the way he's handled small business questions uh, and really spoke to the need to make sure that small businesses are taken care of. While Republicans like Nevada State Chairman Michael McDonald say the president delivered on topics like the economy and foreign policy. He's very poised in his delivery, very specific on points, and he's, he, he's making a great, uh, great argument for everybody. Trump was very collected tonight with his answers, hit him hard with the facts, actually uh, pushed back with a lot of questions for Joe, and Joe Biden was not able to answer a lot of those questions. Reporting in Las Vegas, Lauren Clark, News 3. And they do, and experts tell me so many issues are at stake this election cycle, especially in the midst of a historic pandemic. They say online emotions are high and many are lashing out. Online, you don't see the impact of your words. Fighting, unfriending, and excommunicating. You might think the drama is confined to the computer or phone. But experts warn that social media arguments and strife can easily spill over into the real world. I've seen couples literally go to the verge of breaking up. Um, I've seen kids who won't speak to their parents because of their political views. Licensed clinical social worker Mendy Barron says tension is boiling over. It's hectic. It's hectic. This the, Again, it's not every election. It's certainly many, but this one in particular has really pulled everybody in. We asked News 3 viewers if you've ended a friendship or relationship because of online political posts. Many claimed you have, another having a block list longer than a CVS receipt. Dr. Natalie Pennington with UNLV has studied online political discourse. We also know that when I have arguments online, uh, that it actually decreases the probability that I'll vote. That's why she says civil online discussion is necessary. When I mute or hide or unfriend someone who doesn't have the same viewpoints, I end up only talking to people that agree with me. Uh, and that doesn't really help us really engage in the political process. But amidst for the sake of your mental health and values, sometimes you need boundaries. So it's really taking the time to say our relationships could exist on multiple levels. Um, and at what point does that thing become a breaking point for me to say we're no longer connected to each other? Good afternoon. At last check, there's over 200,000 total ballots that have been turned in here in Clark County. And folks are bringing more through here as they drive in and drop off their mail-in ballots. However, President Trump, or actually, I'm sorry, the Trump campaign and Nevada GOP claim Clark County is breaking the law. Earlier this week, they sent this letter to Nevada Secretary of State claiming Clark County Registrar of Voters Joe Gloria is blocking the public from observing ballots being reviewed and handled. The Nevada GOP said in a statement, Gloria's blatant disregard for accountability and transparency in the ballot counting process infringes on Nevada's right to observe its electoral process. The letter says the Nevada Republican Party will take legal action if Gloria doesn't allow the public the legal right of observing the ballot counting process. Clark, Clark County, excuse me, Representative Dan Coolen told News 3 the county has ensured observers can be at polling places and have created additional areas for observers to see ballot counting. The Nevada State Democratic Party responded to the letter saying President Trump and Republicans are leaving no stone unturned in their quest to cast doubt on the integrity of our election system. After losing their lawsuit, they are now focused on yet another blatant attempt to suppress voter turnout. McCoolin says an official 
response to the GOP letter will be released later today. And also just another reminder, early in-person voting runs until October 30th. Reporting live, Kyle Wilcox, back to you. Well, it's simple. If you've served your time, you have the right to vote. An assembly bill that passed last year made sure of it. And the process to do so is a lot easier than some might think. Um, I think the only challenge for us here in Nevada is letting that formerly incarcerated uh, population know it, it is true um, and there are no traps or hiccups. Jagata Chambers is a rights restoration coordinator with Silver State Voices. He's one of the people who pushed for Assembly Bill 431 to pass back in July of 2019. Um, here, upon your release, you're eligible to vote. Um, as, as hard as it is for formerly incarcerated folks to believe and accept. AB 431 restored the voting rights of convicted felons in Nevada. He says as soon as a person is released from prison, they can vote. No strings attached, even if they're on parole, probation, or have unpaid court and restitution fees. If you are not in a state facility, you are eligible to participate in our election, period. You do the crime, you do the time, and you're supposed to be accepted back in society. Javon Jackson was convicted of a felony and served two years in prison. The upcoming election will be his first time voting in more than 10 years, and he's thankful to have that right. It made me feel more engaged, more involved, and it, it made my voice feel, you know, more like it had a bigger impact because I could actually vote. I could actually vote for my candidates. I could actually vote for my judge, my district attorneys. For convicted felons who didn't know they could vote, it's not too late. Another recently passed assembly bill allows Nevadans to register and vote on election day. Folks will be able to go to the polls November 3rd, complete that registration if they haven't done that thus far, and be able to vote. And Silver State Voices also tells us that they're currently working with people who are in jail but haven't been convicted of any crime yet to make sure that they can place their votes in this upcoming election as well.